Over the last nine months, it has been exceedingly difficult to make plans. Living through the COVID-19 pandemic has meant that we've seen restrictions which, understandably, have altered with changing levels of infection. Holidays, family celebrations, marking of life events, a few of the many types of occasions which have been cancelled or postponed to an unknown time in the future. Young people in schools and colleges had a really challenging time last summer when many saw their hopes, dreams and plans for the future disappear following a series of questionable decisions. In our Gospel reading today, we encounter a young woman of a similar age to those students, actually probably a little younger, a woman who lived in times vastly different from today. In first century Palestine, a young woman would not have made many choices in her life. Lives were very much planned for people, and at what we would consider an incredibly young age these days, this young woman was already engaged to be married. Yes, for Mary, her future was mapped out. An engagement, then as was as binding as a marriage, to end an engagement was the same as a divorce. Mary, as an engaged woman, would have been making plans for the future. Marriage, and then children, in that order of course, and then a quiet, simple life as a carpenter's wife looking after her family. But God's plans were different. The angel Gabriel visited Mary with a message which meant that any planning that Mary had been doing would have to be reconsidered. Gabriel's announcement to Mary was to reassure her. Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. And with that knowledge, the unsophisticated, poor young girl simply listened to the awesome nature of the task for which she had been chosen. To have a baby before she was married. To have a baby as a virgin. To have a baby who is holy. We are told he will be called the Son of God. This was certainly going to change things a bit for her. Unmarried parenthood would present problems to say the least. And who would believe her when she told people that the baby was the Son of God? This was news that would have an impact on the whole of humankind. This was good news, but for Mary, is that how it would have seemed? She did not have the knowledge we have. She could not know the love, pain and sorrow she would experience as her child grew to adulthood and the ultimate sacrifice that would have to be made. She knew her plans for the future would have to change, and yet Mary did not question God's unexpected call on her life. But as a young girl, although she did not question God, she did what any of us might do in a time of uncertainty. She went to visit someone she trusted, older, perhaps wiser, Someone whose plans had also been changed by an unexpected pregnancy, her cousin Elizabeth. Sometimes we need to confide in someone we trust, to be reassured, to be affirmed, particularly when the future seems so daunting. It was just the same for Mary. As she stepped through the door of the house, any uncertainty she may have had was transformed into joy as the baby growing inside Elizabeth leapt and Mary's cousin, filled with the Holy Spirit, greeted her in a way that could have left her with no doubt. She had been chosen for an incredibly special role. Mary's response is her song of praise, the Magnificat's. 
We have heard it in place of a psalm this morning. The Magnificat is also prayed each day at evening prayer as the day begins to draw to a close. It is one of the most famous prayers or songs in Christianity in which the words flow from Mary as a sign of her absolute trust in God. God's plans for Mary's life were good plans, good for her and good for us all, but they were not safe plans. Risks would have to be taken. This year, we have seen our lives take paths which we were not expecting. We have experienced situations which have been challenging to say the least. But in the midst of cancellations, disappointments and undoubtedly great sorrow, there have also been moments of wonder, of unity and joy. And many of us have seen new aspects of our lives come into focus. In these last few days of Advent, before we reach the miracle and celebration of Christmas, whatever form that celebration will take this year, in these days, we have an opportunity to look at our own lives and consider which of our plans does God seem to be changing? What is God leading us to that we are uncertain about? What is happening in our lives that we do not know if we have the courage to handle? Maybe we need to call on those around us to affirm us and guide us as Elizabeth did for Mary, remembering always that God brings us together in community. Mary's trust and faith in God and her relationship with Elizabeth should inspire us to support and encourage each other to respond to the call of God in our lives. In our Old Testament reading today, taken from the second book of Samuel, King David makes plans to build a temple for God to dwell in. Through the prophet Nathan, God lets David know that those plans can be laid aside because God will be the one who does the building. Ultimately, it is the same for us. If we are prepared to slow down, he will build us. He will dwell in us in simple, uncomplicated ways. And he will help us to discover his plans for us. And maybe then, maybe we may be bold enough to declare, just like Mary, let it be with me according to your word. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.